Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, our state is a key part of a troubling report on white supremacy. UK football's early enrollees are here and see part two of my interview with lawyer turned congressional candidate Todd McMurtry. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome into Hey, Kentucky. Ryan Lemon is my co-host tonight. Thanks for being here. Well, you're doing all your fancy with your hair I, thing there. It's, yeah, it's not fancy it's like, as much as it is not washed. <laughs> <laughs> no, you yeah. go with the fancy thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go with fancy. Yeah. All right, this is not an easy discussion to begin with, but there's a disturbing report about white supremacist propaganda that is out. And this report from the Anti-Defamation League says that Kentucky is in the top 10 for distribution of the materials as part of a national increase in such incidents. The report says they jumped by more than 120 percent between 2018 and 2019, following an increase of more than 180 percent the year before. The message distributed by white supremacist organization includes material that directly spreads messages of discrimination against Jews, LGBTQ people, and other minority communities. But the ADL also includes items whose prejudice is obscured by a focus on pro-American imagery. Ryan, all of that's disturbing. Um, Embarrassing yes. that Kentucky is in this list that it's as embarrassing we have to talk about this. I know. So my view is that it is not a shock that the numbers went up um, dramatically over the last three years when pre since President Trump got into office. That's, that's the correlation in my mind. It just stinks that it, Kentucky's part of it. It's very true. Now, I got to say, I'll be honest, I've not seen any of it. Yeah, I haven't either. Not one thing. So I don't know where this is happening, but I'm glad in the circles that I run in I've not seen anything. Yeah, yeah. And so me, kudos to my peeps <laughs> and my peoples. Yes, you you are not a white supremacist. Right. All right. Thanks, Ryan. There you go. All right. In other news, medical marijuana is one step closer to becoming legal in the Commonwealth. For a second year in a row, a medical marijuana bill made it out of committee in Frankfurt. This time, advocates expect a full vote from lawmakers. So far, the bill is getting a lot of support from our citizens. Just last week, a poll showed that 90% of Kentuckians support legalization and those who depend on medical marijuana say they just want their medicine the bill sponsor tells lawmakers to put themselves in those shoes your child's neurologist told you today that your son has a condition that medical marijuana would help my question please think of this question when you cast your vote what would you do i would break the law in a new york minute. The bill passed on a vote of 17 to 1, so there, while there is support for it, there's also some hesitation. Some critics say they worry there isn't enough research on the effects of marijuana. Ryan, I know it's not researched all the way through by the FDA and all of that, but there's enough evidence to support that if a doctor believes that prescribing this will help his patient or her patient, I believe it should be legalized. Oh, I think there's a ton of research. Medical yes. research has shown that, yes, it helps them. And why not? Why not we help these people that probably could definitely benefit, make their lives a little easier? And to be honest, the harm is so much less harmful than opioids or any of that You're stuff. You're exactly like, right. The, just, the, the damage, good outweighs the bad. A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. I, I'd be in support of recreational. It, it's going to pass. But, but that's it's not here pass. yet. Okay. Yeah. Turning to sports now, UK football's early enrollees are officially on campus and preparing for some spring football. This week, the athletics department put together clips to help you get to know the newest Wildcats just a bit before the games get rolling this fall. Several 2020 offensive signees introduced themselves to the Big Blue Nation in a brief video highlighting the players' hometowns, their decisions to sign with UK, and how the initial workouts and adjustments have gone their first few weeks on campus. I grew up such a big fan of the school, always went to football and basketball games growing up, so when I got the opportunity to play here, uh, I jumped on it. I built uh, lifelong relationships with the coaches and some of the players. They were my first offer, so they've been here from jump. In the recruiting process, a lot of coaches, they just recruit you. Like, they just tell you what, what you want to hear to get you there. But I felt like the coaching staff at Kentucky, they told me what was right. They, I felt like they was telling me, like, everything I was I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. 
These videos come just a few days after defensive signees Derek Jackson, Joel Williams, Octavius Oxendine, Andrew Phillips, Tyler Malin, and Samuel Anali were welcomed in as new members of the Kentucky football program. Ryan, there is one recruit that we really need to keep an eye on, though, and according to KSR, UK has at least come very close to matching what Michigan State is offering Vince Merrill. Yeah, he's, he's the biggest recruit in yes. this class to kind of keep him. Uh, yeah, news today that, you know, UK has matched the offer, so now it is kind of on Vince Merrill's plate, besides what he wants to do. I mean, Coach Stoops is our head coach. Losing him would be a big blow. They lose Coach Merrill. That would be as big a blow as losing our head coach. And he's recruited nearly all these guys, all these big names yeah. that have come through Kentucky over the years. He has his fingers on them on nearly all of them. And guess what? He's going to be recruiting the same exact place if he's in Michigan State. At so, Michigan State. Yeah. And um, he's beat Michigan State for nearly all these kids that we've got to come to Kentucky. I know. I know. I, I'm glad that Mitch Barnhart is going to is willing to give him the money because yes. that's what we need to very do. true yeah i'm glad kentucky stepped up all right now to kentucky basketball are the cats ready to make a serious run in the ncaa tournament some say while the team has definitely improved since the start of the season they may be a couple pieces short of making the final four well that's based on some inconsistent play whether it be from uk's guards or the front court despite the emergence of center nick richards the cats seem vulnerable to teams that figure out how to create a half court game or overpower them in the paint and create an inside-out approach to scoring. Uh, Ryan, I feel like we're getting to the more consistent part of the season. Now, I'm not saying this team is going to make a run to the Final Four, but if our guards play like they did against Vandy, if they continue to play that way, I think there's a shot. There's no doubt. Especially Ashton Higgins needed to figure things out. He'd had about a month where he didn't play. But down at Vandy, he had one turnover, and it was like in the first mm -hmm. minute of the game. Higgins was great. He plays like that. We're tough to beat. Maxi was great. He yeah. didn't force things, didn't force shots, and quickly had just become a superstar. He was both Maxi and, and quickly with three or four from, from three point land. Those three guards play like that, they're going to be extremely, extremely hard to beat. Because listen, Baylor at this point looks like the overall number one seed. They scare you? No. No. So but, it's that's that's the other thing in this mix is no team really scares me no. out there. Match us up against anybody, yeah. and with those three guards, they're going to be hard for anybody to beat Kentucky. Absolutely. Yep. All right, staying with March Madness, the brackets have been set for the girls and boys. Sweet 16 tournaments. There are some enticing matchups on tap for next month. The girls' tournament will be he held first the week of March 11th. Central Kentucky's 11th region, which contains Scott County, Franklin County, and Dunbar, among others, will face off against the 8th region, Home to consensus number two, Simon Kenton. Scott County bested Simon Kenton by just two points last month. Now on the boys' side, the 16th region, featuring current undefeated and AP number one Ashland Blazers, matched up against a fifth region with John Harden, Bardstown, and E-Town, all ranked among the top 13 in the latest Cantrell ratings. And Ryan, I, th these matchups, know who's going to be in it, but it, it never, it doesn't matter. This is always still the best tournament in the country. Love it. I love the Sweet 16. You and I get to see yes. a lot of these games. Awesome. I hate it a lot of times we're on the road with Kentucky, so we don't get to see it. I'm telling you what, that first round matchup with Ashland and maybe if it's John Harden out of the fifth region, that could be a potential state championship matchup in the first round. First round. Yeah. Yeah. I think we had a couple of those last year too. Oh, every year yeah. it seems like you get one like yeah. that. All right, now to our weekly feature on Hey Kentucky, What's the Beef? Sponsored by the Kentucky Beef Council. First, dozens of volunteers with the Kentucky chapter of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America joined religious leaders in Frankfurt today. The group held a rally and met with lawmakers to urge them to strengthen our gun safety laws. Meanwhile, Senator Rand Paul has a beef with YouTube. The online video platform pulled one of his clips in which the Bowling Green Republican outs the Ukraine whistleblower's alleged identity on the Senate floor. And that's tonight's edition of What's the Beef? Up next on Hey Kentucky, part two of my interview with Todd McMurtry. The lawyer turned congressional candidate talks about the high profile case that first put him in the public eye. Stay with us. <laughs> 